Why, hello, my loves, and welcome back to Spook Manor. Are you here for a delicious twist on a classic tale? Then join me as we feast on the wishes of a young girl. It is on the morning of Thanksgiving in a small town where our story begins. 13-year-old Nikki stands in the kitchen of the small suburban home, reluctantly helping her mother cook the overly elaborate meal. She moves about her task slowly with a bitter heart. They had been up since 5 a.m. to have the food ready by noon. Family from both sides would be showing up, and Nikki wondered how they could possibly fit in the small living room and tiny kitchen. Nikki hated Thanksgiving, and really hated all holidays for that matter. Her parents were dysfunctional to say the least. Her father and uncle would always drink too much and fight over the littlest things. It seemed that someone was always either going to the hospital or going to jail by the end of the day. Her older brother struggled with a drug problem that her parents tried to hide from relatives, rather than provide him the care that he really needed. This is because her mother suffered from depression with obsessive tendencies. Stressed to the max from exhaustion and anxiety, Nikki counted the seconds until her grandmother would arrive. Her grandmother being the only person in her family that she truly felt close to. As noon arrived, so did the extended family. Lots of fake smiles, subtle rude jabs, and half-hearted hugs flew about the room like a pack of wolves stalking their prey. And then, Nikki got the news that her grandmother wasn't going to make it to Thanksgiving this year. She had been feeling under the weather, and felt it best to avoid the family for fear of sharing the common cold with everyone. Nikki begged her mother to let her walk to her grandmother's house to check on her, but her mother refused. She lived across town, and it would take too long for Nikki to walk all that way and back before dark. Plus, everyone wants you to stay for the festivities, her mother stated in a sickly sweet tone. Yet Nikki knew full well that she was going to be ignored by all of the adults anyway. Devastated, she ran off to her room to hide for as long as she could get away with. But it wasn't long before dinner began around 1 p.m., and by 6, everyone had either passed out from food coma or was on their fourth or fifth drink of spirits. Like clockwork, the arguing began, and as the conversation started to get heated, Nikki decided to slip back to her room. As she made her way down the hall, her older brother called to her from the kitchen. She turned back and found him sitting at the small round table that was too big for the small space. I got the wishbone, he called out, holding up the small white bone of the turkey. She laughed, remembering how one of them would always snatch it before their parents could get it when they were younger. This was the first time she had thought about it in several years. She felt she had lost her brother in many ways due to his addiction, and was taken aback by the warm gesture. Wanting to hold on to this rare close moment, she walked over and sat on the seat beside him. Slowly, she grabbed one end of the wishbone, and he continued to hold the other. Looking in her eyes, he stated with tears, I wish all of our problems would just go away. It was then that people flooded the small kitchen, arguing loudly as they reached for pie and other tasty treats. Annoyed at this intrusion, tears began to roll down Nikki's cheeks as she closed her eyes. She pulled on the bone, wishing with all of her might that everyone in the world, everyone except her grandmother, would just disappear. She felt the wishbone snap, and the room went completely silent. She opened her eyes, looked around to see what had just happened. She glanced down at her hand to find the larger fragment of bone in her palm. Nikki sat alone in her kitchen without power, the only light source being from two candles her mother had left burning on the table for decorative purposes. Quickly, she ran to the emergency drawer and grabbed a flashlight. Walking through the empty house, she could see remnants of her family having been there. Their coats still hung on the rack or over the couches and chairs. Toys lay on the floor and food was still left out. But everyone was simply gone. Their cars remained in the driveway as she looked out the window. Every house on the block was dark and no one appeared to be moving inside their homes. Nikki began to panic. It is a very dark autumn night and the wind caused the leaves to dance about ominously in the light of her dim flashlight. She noticed a cat sneak around a tall fence and realized that there were still animals running wild. This only intensified her fear, but she felt she had no other choice. Filled with terror, she ran out into the darkness of the night. 
running from house to house. She began banging on the doors and windows, screaming for help, yet there was never an answer. Quickly, the gravity of the situation dawned on her. With no people, there would be a no electricity or running water, no heat to survive the coming winter. She was alone, all alone in the massive world. She ran down the block, screaming for anyone to come to her. Anyone, anyone at all. There were no streetlights or sounds, just slick and icy roads. Falling to her knees with tears streaming down her face, she remembered. Grandma, I wished only Grandma would not disappear. With new hope, Nikki pulled herself together and got to her feet. She knew it would be a long walk across town, but her grandmother was her only hope. Walking past the deserted buildings caused chills to run down her body, chills that she would remember for the rest of her life. To distract herself from her fears, Nikki thought about her family and how they tried to fix themselves over the years. Her mom was going to therapy and her father to AA. Her brother had been in and out of institutions for years. She had watched him suffer so much. As her thoughts continued, she found comfort in thinking about the good things about her family, the parts of them that she loved and cherished, playing with her brother when they were younger, her father teaching her to ride a bike, and her mother always ensured that she had everything she needed, from clean clothes to warm food on her plate every night. She finally made it to her grandmother's house, and to her excitement, there was a candle burning in the window. She ran to the front door and flung it open. There was her beloved grandmother, sitting as she always did in her recliner with a warm blanket and cup of tea. The two hugged and Nikki filled her grandmother in on all that had happened. They decided to run to the neighbor's empty house and take the wishbone from the cold turkey on their dining table. Each promised the other they would wish for the world to come back to normal. With intense focus they pulled. The bone had snapped and the world around them appeared as though their wish had come true. Everything was seemingly back to normal. Quickly, Nikki's grandmother drove her home before anyone noticed that she was gone. It was several days later that Nikki called her grandmother with a strange question. Though things uh, appeared to be the same on the surface, there was some drastic changes that had taken place. Nikki casually asked, Grandmother, you got the bigger end of the wishbone. What did you really wish for? She could hear her grandmother smile through the phone as she replied, My wish was that everyone in the family would be granted their true heart's desire. With that, Nikki's father and brother had found the strength to overcome their addiction. Her mother had found the inner peace she had always been seeking. And Nikki was gifted gratitude. She was thankful to finally have the family and support that she had always wanted. So tell me, my loves, have you ever had a wish granted? Or perhaps been given an otherworldly blessing that went unexplained? Tell me, what are you thankful for? Please, comment down below and like and subscribe for more fictional stories that are often of actual urban legends and sometimes have historical reference. See you next week and have a good night.